13 in the National Football League has officially come and gone. So let's take a look at what the AFC and NFC playoff pictures look like here as we enter week 14. Welcome into NFL Daily. I am your host, Jack Sperry. And before we break down the NFL playoff picture today, do me a favor, click that subscribe button if you're interested in in-depth and free and daily NFL content right here on the Chat Sports YouTube channel. We got 300,000 300, strong right here at Chat Sports. So make sure you join the family right now if you're, in, if you're interested in NFL coverage. Now let's go over the AFC playoff picture here after Monday Night Football between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals last night. The Bengals won 34 to 31. And right now we have a new number one seed in the AFC, and that is the Miami Dolphins, followed by the Baltimore Ravens, the Kansas City Chiefs, and then the Jacksonville Jaguars go down to number four uh, there at the number four seed. And then in the wild card spots, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cleveland Browns, and the Indianapolis Colts, all sitting at seven and five. We'll be breaking down each of these teams here pretty much individually. So let's start with the Miami Dolphins here, who are the new number one seed here in the AFC after winning against the Washington Commanders by a final score of 45 to 15 in Washington. So Miami... Looks like that offense is definitely rolling right now. Tyreek Hill is arguably the league's MVP to this point. Had added another two touchdowns uh, to his total on the season in week 13. This week, they're going to be going up against the Tennessee Titans. And moving forward, they got a playoff probability of over 99%. So you can expect to see Miami playing football here in January as uh, they look to get their uh, to get a Super Bowl here with Tua Tungavailoa, Tua Tungavailoa, Mike McDaniel and company. Their defense has gotten a lot better with Jalen Ramsey now in the fold. They do miss uh, Jalen Phillips a little bit there on the edge, but this is definitely a team you have to be keeping your eye on. It's definitely going to be a dangerous team as we approach the NFL postseason. And then the team that was the number one seed now moves down a little bit here is the Baltimore Ravens. They were on by here in week 13, so they did not play. Coming up here, they're going to be going up against the Rams, and they still got the Jaguars, likely without Trevor Lawrence. We'll get to that here in just a second. They got the 49ers, uh, Dolphins, and then they finish out this season with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So a tough three-game stretch there for the Ravens to finish out the year, but their playoff prob probability is at 99% to this point. So pretty much no matter how things shake up, for the Baltimore Ravens at this point in the year. You definitely see Baltimore um, getting to that 10-win mark. And usually if you get to 10 wins, you're going to be uh, participating in the NFL playoffs. Number three in the AFC right now is the Kansas City Chiefs. Also a playoff probability of 99%. They did lose to the Green Bay Packers uh, at Lambeau here on Sunday night football in week 13. They got the Bills next on the docket. The Bills are desperate for a win, so I'm definitely going to be looking out for that matchup this week here with Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and crew at Arrowhead going up against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. They also got the Patriots, the Raiders, the Bengals, and the Chargers to finish out their season. I really don't think anybody expects Kansas City uh, to be missing the playoffs here. They're definitely one of the best teams in the National Football League. Do have a little bit of a problem at wide receiver, no doubt about that, but they're definitely a playoff caliber team, and as long as they got Patrick Mahomes, they're going to be in the mix. Now, the team that I'm definitely going to want to talk a lot about today is the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, of course, lost to Jake Browning and the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday Night Football last night by a final score of 34 to 31. Uh, and now it seems like Trevor Lawrence is going to be out for the next couple of games with a uh, ankle sprain here. And they've got a rough stretch of two games in a row here. They're going to the Cleveland Browns, who currently have, uh, are giving up the lowest amount of yards per game. They're, that defense is absolutely incredible. And then also you got the Baltimore Ravens defense, which is the number two defense in terms of yards allowed per game. So with uh, Trevor Lawrence out of the lineup, it definitely seems like this offense is going to probably struggle over the next couple of weeks. But their playoff probability is still at 97%. Uh, it's definitely going to be a tough stretch here for the Jacksonville Jaguars because Trevor Lawrence, we really don't know when he's going to be back, if he comes back at all this year. It does seem like an ankle sprain, uh, but he was very ginger walking off the field uh, last night, and it, you just you just really hope that tr number 16 here can get back on the field. The NFL is better when you have the top quarterbacks in the league on the field playing at their best, 
and seeing multiple number like top quarterbacks in this league go down this year. Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, now Trevor Lawrence, all go down with major injuries. It just sucks to see, so we're definitely praying for Trevor Lawrence. Hopefully he can get back on the field as soon as possible. Also, we have an AFC North uh, standings list for here at Producer Tex. If we can check that out for the Jacksonville Jaguars here. Uh, so something I want to talk about with Jacksonville is that you know, with Trevor Lawrence out of the lineup here for probably the next couple of weeks, you've got the Indianapolis Colts and the Houston Texans both nipping at the heels of the Jacksonville Jaguars at this point, sitting at 7-5 and five each respectively. So if Jacksonville, let's say they lose the next two games here against the Browns, and the Ravens, you're sitting at 8-6, and six, and that gives Indy and Houston a really great opportunity to sneak up and potentially take the lead here in the AFC South in the weeks to come before we get to the end of the 2023 regular season. So let me know down there in the comment section, who wins the AFC South? Let me know down there in the comment section. Type JAC if you think the Jaguars still pull it out. If you think the Colts come up here, type IND. Or if you think the Houston Texans, led by uh, uh, assuming the rookie of the year here, uh, CJ Stroud, type HOU down there in the comment section. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. So now who is in the AFC wild card hunt? And right now there's a lot of teams that could potentially find their way in the AFC playoff picture at this point in the season. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers, Cleveland Browns, and Indianapolis Colts currently in the picture as we stand here today, sitting at 7-5, and five, but the Houston Texans coming off a big win against the Denver Broncos last week is right there, sitting at 7-5. and five. They're definitely uh, uh, threatening to get into the AFC playoff picture at this point. Cincinnati is still hanging on after that big win on Monday Night Football. Jake Browning put up over 300 passing yards and led some really big drives down the stretch for Cincy. The Buffalo Bills, very talented football team, uh, but they're sitting at 6-6. Six and six. They got the Chiefs coming up this week. They're going to have to start pull pulling together some wins if they want to get back in the AFC playoff picture here. And then a little bit less likely here is the Chargers and Raiders sitting at 5-7. and seven. But Justin Herbert, man, very talented quarterback. They got some good talent there in L.A. Uh, Brandon Staley wants to save his job. It looks like the Chargers are going to have to go on a late season push here. So coming up here on NFL Daily, I'm going to be going over the NFC playoff picture, some clinching scenarios this week here in the NFC. We'll break those down here in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. If you're looking for a way to spice up your game days this NFL season, then Prize Picks is going to be perfect for you, Prize Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. And if you're wondering how daily fantasy sports works, here's how you pick two to six players, and if they'll go for more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can even win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So let's take a look at my entry for this Thursday night football matchup here coming up in week 14 between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. I'm going with the more on all Steelers here. I got the passing yards with Mitchell Trubisky. I got the more uh, rushing yards for Jalen Warren, who has really been a great player this year. And then also I got the more receiving yards for George Pickens. When Trubisky was in last year, George was his favorite receiver. So I think he'll get more than 38.5 receiving yards here on Thursday night. You can check it out now at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. With prize picks, it takes less than 60 seconds to make your picks. So get started right away. Get your picks in before Thursday night football between the Steelers and Pats. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100 today. All right, moving on to the NFC here where the Eagles, despite taking the L to the San Francisco 49ers, they're still sitting at the number one overall spot here in the NFC playoff picture with a record of 10-2. and two. The Niners are right on their tail, though. Same thing with the Detroit Lions, both at 9-3. and three. Atlanta still leads the NFC South with a record of 6-6. Six and six. The Cowboys uh, are, are definitely dominating the NFC wild card picture right now. Uh, with a record of 9-3, and three. and then also the Vikings and Packers round out the rest of the wild card spots at this point. We'll break down the wild card hunt here in just a second, but first let's go over the division winners, starting with the Philadelphia Eagles here, where of course they took a 
They got humbled a little bit. Let's just put it that way, uh, that way here this week against the 49ers, losing 42-19 to on their home turf. This week, they're traveling to Dallas, going up against the 9-3 and Cowboys. That's going to be a huge matchup here for both of these NFC East rivals. Coming up here, they also got Seattle, the Giants, the Cardinals, and the Giants again. So their schedule kind of eases up here towards the end of the year. Definitely think the Eagles are a prime candidate to be the number one overall seed here in the NFC. If they can beat the Cowboys here on Sunday night football, I think they probably actually get that job done for sure. Their playoff prob probability is over 99%, and they could actually clinch a playoff spot this week with a, with a couple of different scenarios here. So you could win, and the Rams could lose or tie. You could win, or Seattle could lose or tie. You could win, Min Minnesota would have to lose or tie, and then Green Bay loses or tie, and then if you win, again, Green Bay lose or tie, and the Detroit Lions, if they lose or tie, the, Green, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles will be making the playoffs here in 2020. 23. Now we move on to the team that just beat the Eagles this week and kind of shellacked them, if we're being honest here, the San Francisco 49ers. 42-19 against the number one overall seed in the NFC. A very, very big win for this team. Brock Purdy uh, is, the, is the leading bet getter right now uh, for MVP. He has had a phenomenal season in Kyle Shanahan's offense. Coming up here, they got the Seattle Seahawks at home followed by the Cardinals, Ravens, Commanders, and then the Rams to finish off the season. Their playoff probability is also above 99% at this point. And I think after last week's win against the Eagles, you have to look at the 49ers probably right now as the team that might be the most likely to come out of the NFC as the, as the, as the conference champs here and to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl. Now you go over the clinching scenarios for San Francisco this week. If you win and Minnesota loses, you're in. If you win, Minnesota ties and Green Bay ties. San Francisco is also in. And if San Francisco wins and Green Bay wins, then the Niners will be clinching their ticket here to the, NF to the NFC playoffs here in 2023. Uh, number three here, though, but a team that's a little bit, uh, you know, under the radar here a little bit is the Detroit Lions, still sitting at nine and three, still a very, very good football team. Jared Goff has had some issues with interceptions over the last month or so, but they did get the win over the Saints, 33 to 28 uh, on the on the road too, as well. So you go up against the Bears here on the road. It's supposed to be snowy in Chicago this weekend, though. Then you get Denver, Minnesota, Dallas, and then the Vikings again to finish off the season. Their playoff prob probability is at 99%. And really with the Detroit Lions right now, they're pretty much going to win the NFC North. It's pretty much locked up at this point. And, you know, you look at Minnesota, they're sitting at 6-6. Six and six. Green Bay is sitting at 6-6. Six and six. And with Detroit being three games ahead of those teams, I really don't see any surprises here towards the end of the year. Expect Detroit to represent uh, the NFC North in terms of, of, of being the champion here in that division. Then we get to the NFC South, and this is probably the worst division in football. I think we all know that. The Atlanta Falcons currently sitting at 6-6, six and six, still at the top of the division. They won last week against the Jets, a 13-8 victory. Uh, they're going up against the division rival Buccaneers. That'll be a big game within the division this week. But then you also go up against the Panthers, the Colts, the Bears, and the Saints. So a pretty, uh, a pretty soft end, uh, finish to their schedule, I would say. But their playoff probability is only at 64%. Quarterback play has been a big issue for the Atlanta Falcons this year. They can run the football real well. They play defense uh, pretty decently. Uh, their overall team stats pretty uh, respectable, which is why that they're the number one seed in this really bad division at this point, man. But this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, just one game separates these two teams. So I'm really going to be watching that matchup this week because I really think that this game between the Buccaneers and the Falcons could play uh, a big role here in who ends up winning this division because it seems like the Saints are kind of in shambles right now. Now let's go to the team that's definitely going to be making it as an NFC a wild card, or at, or at least they might even win the division if they can beat the Eagles this week. But the Dallas Cowboys get another win at home against the Seattle Seahawks on Thursday night football. Last week with a 41-35 finish there. A uh, little bit of a scare, but you know Dallas survived, and the offense has been playing freaking fantastic. Dak Prescott is a bona fide MVP candidate at this point. Of course, you got the Eagles, that huge matchup that we talked about earlier uh, here on Sunday Night Football coming up, but you got the Bills, the Dolphins, Detroit, and Washington. So kind of a tough end to the schedule here for Dallas, which makes me think the Eagles, because they got a softer schedule here, they'll probably end up 
winning the NFC East this year, but you never know. Dallas is playing really good football, but sitting at 9-3, and three, their playoff probability is sitting at 99%. I mean, seriously, if Dallas doesn't make the playoffs at this point, I think it would absolutely shock the world. Dak Prescott's playing great football. Uh, uh, you know, Dan Quinn's got this defense playing really good football as well, even without Trayvon Diggs. So I really think the Dallas Cowboys... Uh, at least on paper, should be one of the favorites to potentially uh, uh, represent the NFC for this year's Super Bowl. Uh, but the big question is, do you trust Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott to win in the playoffs? I guess that's a whole other question entirely. Now let me know down there in the comment section, who's going to be the number one seed in the NFC uh, playoffs this year? Is it going to be the Eagles, type PHI? Do you think it'll be the 49ers, type SF? Do you think it'll be the Lions, type DET? Or do you think the Dallas Cowboys here uh, kind of usurp everybody coming from the wild card spot, type DAL, down there in the comments section? Then the teams that I think are kind of in the hunt for the for that uh, for these final two NFC wild card spots: Minnesota, Green Bay, both sitting at six and six. Uh, Los Angeles and Seattle also. Uh, sitting at 6-6. Six and six. Los Angeles is getting hot at the right time. S Matthew Stafford's playing some really good football. Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup are a really nice wide receiver duo. But you also have to watch out for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and New Orleans Saints, both sitting at 5-7. and seven. Uh, Tampa, I really think this game against the Atlanta Falcons is going to be massive for their playoff chances. But right now, uh, it definitely seems like those top four teams, Minnesota, Green Bay, Los Angeles, and Seattle, are definitely the favorites to lock up those final two NFC wildcard spots as we uh, go down the home stretch here of the 2023 season. So let me know down there in the comments section which NFC team do you think is a sleeper right now? Which team in the NFC do you think could come out of nowhere and really go on a run? And, you know, if I'd have to pick one team right now, I'm going to pick the Minnesota Vikings. I think what Brian Flores has done with this year's defense is absolutely incredible. Coming into the year, at least on paper, this should have been, should, this should have been a bottom five defense in the league, guys. And they're doing a great job. They're above average defense. Uh, and Josh Dobbs, I've liked some of the things that I've seen from him. Rough game against the Chicago Bears. But he's going to be getting Justin Jefferson back this week when, the, when they play the Raiders. I could absolutely see them having a great connection. And if that's the case, you got a pretty darn good offense mixed with a pretty darn good defense. I could see Minnesota going on a little bit of a run and being a little bit dangerous here as an NFC wild card, uh, 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 you know, potential contender here in Minnesota. Don't think they're a Super Bowl team, but they could definitely do some damage in the NFL playoffs this year, in my opinion. That'll be it for today's show, guys. Really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button down there for more in-depth NFL coverage throughout the week. Really do appreciate you guys. I will see you guys later. Until next time, peace, guys.